Students, Eric Maggotson here. We're going to look at Chapter 4, Programs and Apps. And as we do, of course, we've gone through what it is that these programs and apps operate on, and that, of course, is a computing device of some sort, normally with primary memory, which is computer memory, secondary storage of some sort, uh, whether that be a hard drive, SSD, etc., and then, of course, a processor to process all those ones and zeros into particular applications, features, functions that are used on the computer. So let's take a look at programs and apps. So we'll look at these outcomes. I would encourage you to pause, look at these. I, of course, will be covering this content. And again, just as a reminder, this coincides with your book uh, starting on page 158. So if you want great idea, read the book, do the lecture, do the lecture, read the book, whatever the case is. Remember, you've paid for these investments. Get the most out of the class that you can. So additional objectives that we'll look at here. And let's get on with them. So a program or software consists of a series of related instructions organized for a common purpose. So the idea here is a program that is specific. Okay. So <laughs> Most of you, when you think of Microsoft Office, I hear a lot of folks say, well, Microsoft Office is a program. Microsoft Office is what's called a suite. It is multiple programs that are packaged together because they're common things that people do, okay? So an application or app, sometimes called an application software, consists of programs designed to make users more productive and or assist them with personal tasks, so more productive. What are we talking about there? Well, we're talking about Microsoft Word, for example. If we need to write a letter, we need to do a brochure. Word has just expanded, and we'll get more into details on that. But all of the programs have expanded. More features, more functionalities, more things with every upgrade, every version. Of course, when we talk about programs and software, an operating system is a set of programs that coordinates all the activities within a computer, mobile device, computing device, whatever the case may be. So the operating system itself is what allows all of the components in a, in a computer to interoperate, okay? And then in addition, we're given tools and activities such as say the defragmentation tool that helps us keep our computer running well, okay? Now, if you have solid state, you don't have to defrag as much as if you have a spinny disk or spinny disk, the traditional disk drive, magnetic media, spins at 5,400, 7,200, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 RPMs. And of course, the faster it spins, the faster the program that we're talking about here can be loaded into memory. So just like with the operating system, when we go to use a program or an app, by coming down here, for example, you know, saying Word, getting and opening up Microsoft Word, this program now is being transferred from my secondary storage into the memory. So boom, that's what's going on right there. It's in secondary storage. I'm ready to use Microsoft Word to create a blank document, look at it, create a report, a resume, um, marketing brochures, you name it. So, and of course, most of you are familiar when we talk about apps on your smartphone, so applications on your smartphone. Operating system user interface designed on the screen, you know, uh, when the user turns on the computer. So, of course, today we have operating systems that are graphical user interfaces. It's more intuitive. It's what makes it work. We click on the icon. We don't have to open up a command prompt and say, type word.exe and enter to get Microsoft Word to open up. We just click on an icon, or in this case, you know, come down here to the search bar, you know, start typing in power, and of course I get PowerPoint as my first example, the program I use the most, and then there's another program called PowerShell, which is a scripting tool for Windows. So even you could PowerShell, and that in itself is also a piece of software and an application, okay? So software available in varieties of forms, yes, retail, customized software, uh, web applications, we've talked a lot about that, mobile applications, download them from the Google Play Store, for example, or the um, Mac Store, et cetera. 
mobile web apps, shareware, freeware. We'll talk about all these open source and public domains. So there is software that people actually program and produce and then essentially either give away or share at a greatly reduced cost over say a product that is developed by a company for much more profit. Now keep in mind when we talk about software that's developed by companies, it tends to be for the purpose of generating money and thus in order to get us to use that software, well, it's gonna be better, faster, more productive, have more features and functionalities. So productivity applications can assist you become more effective and efficient. So word processing, presentation software, spreadsheet. Let me go over this real quick. Keep in mind that Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Access, those aren't the only players in that field. Today, Google has a very good product you know, with Google Docs, Google Presentation, Google Sheets, they have Google Form, um, which allows you to generate a form, post it to the web, and have the data go back to a spreadsheet, for example. So note-taking software, of course, the one that everybody knows that comes with our computer is Notepad. We have calendaring and content, content, contact management. So this can be Outlook. This can be uh, Gmail, for example, project management software. Uh, Microsoft Project is a project that uh, software that Microsoft, and what it allows me to do is keep track of projects. Not only IT projects, but business projects, who's doing what, what are the due dates, how long is it going to take them, etc. Accounting software, of course, QuickBooks, most people know, personal finance, Quicken, for example. Legal software, so it used to be you wanted a will, you had to go to an attorney. Now you can buy software that's state specific, you call, call up your state, and it helps you or walks you through the process of you know, uh, doing a divorce, for example, doing a will, doing other legal documents that you used to have to go and have prepared. So tax preparation, well, this is a great time. Tax season is just around the corner. Document management allows us to take all these Word documents and spreadsheets and all these documents and put them together, manage them in folders, say we can manage them by all the documents that pertain to a customer, that pertain to a vendor, that pertain to a division of our business, for example, and also allows us to create a process for managing a document. So maybe a document has to go to multiple people before it's signed off as, say, a process or a procedure. We can run it through a document management system, create a workflow where someone starts the document, someone else adds to it, someone else edits it, someone else approves it, and we have a workflow. So we see that as well. And then when we talk about enterprise computing, we're not just talking about the enterprise version of a software, but software that is designed for an enterprise. One of those would be ERP. Okay, enterprise resource planning software. And that's software with modules that cover everything from uh, sales and marketing to quality control to manufacturing to bill of materials to customer service. So the idea is to have one system, one huge database that encompasses all of the operations of a business. This way, we don't have data in one system and data in another and data in another and data on our web and data you know, with vendors and stuff like that that makes it very hard for us to manage a business when we have to go to multiple systems to get answers to answer questions. So ERP is really huge. Large companies use it all over. So um, Microsoft makes a product called Don Dynamics. You might have heard of SAP software, for example, Mass 500. Those are some of the big players in ERP software. With productivity applications, so users start by creating a project. Now remember, a project can be a brochure uh, created in Word. We can edit it. We can share it. Others can edit it. We can format a project. We can save the project. And then, of course, distribute it, whatever that project may be. Uh, it may be a spreadsheet. It may be a PowerPoint to demonstrate a new product or service or feature. So, <laughs> so let's get into a little bit more of the specifics. Word processing allows users to create and manipulate documents. Now today, 
we're not talking about just black and white letters and memos and boring. We're talking about things with customized, stylized uh, headers and tables in colors that match the corporate colors, in fonts that match the corporate fonts, continuing to extend that marketing image from just what's on the box to every communication that a company makes. A great example of that is you can pretty much imagine every single communication, whether it be a memo, whether it be a letter, a bill, an invoice, a presentation, an internal presentation to other people in the company, you know what's, what's going to be on everything that Nike creates, and that's the swish. You're going to know that that's it. It's going to be in specific fonts and specific sizes for the consistency within a company. Okay. Now, word processing has certainly changed. As we'll see, when we start implementing word processing, we can create certificates. We can create um, letters and resumes. We can create brochures. We can create a newsletter. We can do amazing things with Microsoft Word. Presentation software, yep, just like the one I'm using here, PowerPoint. Um, the publisher of the book created these PowerPoints for us to use. They're, you know, for the most part, they're pretty darn good. And when they're not, I do augmented videos and stuff to demonstrate. So again, as we go through this, we're just looking at the real basics. So presentation software used to create visual aids for presentations, communication ideas, messages, and other information group. Now keep in mind that we can create a PowerPoint with an embedded video, with audio, and a lot of times when you go to trade shows, what you're seeing circulating over and over again on, a, on say, a big screen is a PowerPoint that plays over and over again that's, that's portraying whatever message that company is trying to get out to the people that are at, say, a trade show, for example. So again, don't just think of PowerPoint as a way to communicate boring information in class, okay? One of the absolute best PowerPoints that I've ever seen was called the black and white of network security. And as you can imagine, the entire thing was black and white. It was good and good meant it was a white background with black text and bad meant it was a black background with white text. And so on every screen, there were the pros and cons and it was easy to understand and it was very well done. No graphics, black and white, it really impacted because security is either that, it's, you know, black or white. So spreadsheet software. <laughs> now, spreadsheets in Microsoft Excel tend to scare the heck out of people because they're like, oh, I'm no good at math. I da, 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 da. Folks, we can use spreadsheets and create data that we never even do a single calculation on, that we never use a, fee a function, for example, on data. An example might be a customer list. Uh, that we then want to keep so that we can sort it by city, sort it by zip, sort it by last name, sort it by first name, sort it by date of birth, for example. Maybe we keep our customers' date of birth so that people in the company can sign a quick um, birthday card and mail it out so that we make that connection. So don't just think of spreadsheets as ways of doing these complex budgets and stuff like that. I'm going to give you examples of using a spreadsheet for productivity that has nothing to do with calculations and numbers and functions and stuff like that. However, we will get into this and you are going to create a personal budget in this class because it is of value. It's a value of understanding where your money goes. I'm going to, you all are going to create, I'm going to show you how to create in, in a spreadsheet a loan calculator. So never again, when you go out and get a loan, are you not going to know how much interest you're going to pay on the loan, how long you're going to pay? You, you might even do some calculations within our tables to say, what if I pay it off earlier? What if I pay $100 more a month? How much interest am I going to save? So that is important and we will go over that. All right, let's end this portion uh, with talking briefly about a database. Now the database you see here is Microsoft Access and it is a small database used for small databases in small companies. Uh, we're not talking about SQL Server or Oracle-based databases, large that hold thousands, millions, trillions of pieces of information called attributes. 
But in this case, it's, it's a database that's fairly easy to program. We have a class here at COCC that teaches folks uh, the introduction to database and, and uses access. And what we can see here is that, you know, we have some sort of unique identifier that identifies a row. This is a row, which, which means it's a record of information. So in this case, we know this customer is Applewood State University. We have their street, their city, their state, their postal code, the amount they've paid, the current amount due, any returns that they've had. And what makes a database work is we don't have to query all this. We can just query by this ID and get all the information about this company. We can add tables together to say, give me all of the orders placed by this company, for example. So in this case, what we have here are tables that store the data, queries, queries are easy, query is a question. Forms are how the data is put into the database, so we don't have to come here and type it. We have a, we can create a form. And then reports is the information we get from the data. So that's the questions we ask from a query. And then we format the query to create a report that gives us back the information that we need. So um, a database, most companies today definitely want a database. They're going to utilize a database. The goal of a database is simply only have each piece of information in there one time. So the example, Dark Community College here, would be in this customer table one time, and we wouldn't have every time Dart places an order with us or does business with us, we wouldn't have another table that says Dart Community College, Dart Community College, Dart Community College. It's going to identify this and add to it a unique identifier for the other table so that we can quickly query data. All right, so went over the 15 minutes. We're at 17 minutes. That's close enough. I'll see you in part two.